Today we're checking out an oldie but a goodie. This is the Audio Technica AT3035. Here we go. Welcome back guys, my name's Shane. Today we're checking out this Audio Technica AT3035 large diaphragm condenser microphone. I'm gonna leave some time codes in the description below so you can skip ahead to any particular section if you like. Now the reason I wanted to put this microphone in the mix is because you can find this for an absolute bargain generally on the secondhand market. This is a discontinued microphone. You can still buy the newer superseded version of this from many other places on the internet, but if you are shopping on a budget and you wanna find a great secondhand microphone, this would definitely be a really great choice. So the AT3035 has a lot going for it. It's a large diaphragm condenser microphone, which means it's basically gonna work with any sound card that you have. Now I've got this currently going into my Steinberg UR22 MK2. The preamp though, to push it, I'm actually using my DBX, but I'm not using any other effects. It's just using the preamp as that's how I've got the signal chain wired up. It's actually in bypass mode completely, minus the fact I've got the gain at 12 o'clock. So that's it. If I was plugging it into the Steinberg, it would sound pretty much exactly the same. Right now we're testing this microphone completely dry with no other effects. I probably change the level in post and if I have done that, I'll leave some information on screen. And then we'll also try it in just a moment with some effects thanks to the DBX286S, which is a great preamp and vocal microphone processor. If you do find one of these microphones on the secondhand market, or if you go for one of the newer generation, they all come with this type of shock mount, which is fantastic. One of the small downsides of them though, is if for whatever reason, if the little elastic rope part on the inside gets loose, it can be a nightmare trying to get it back to sitting flush. If you were gonna buy one of these microphones, I would probably say try and find a Rode shock mount. They're a whole lot better than these Audio Technica ones just in terms of their build quality and you won't have any problems having it fit either. Now I actually have a Rode NT1, which is one of my favorite mics of all time. And that particular, and this particular microphone fits in that particular shock mount. So if you're wondering which one to get, go for the Rode. But this mic itself has a lot going for it, which we'll get into now. Now, in terms of the build quality of this microphone, it's still working at least 10 years after the fact, which is fantastic. It's made in Japan. It feels like a really robust microphone. My only small criticism of the build quality, as I mentioned, is the shock mount. I don't think the shock mount is great. But other than that, I think it's a really solid microphone especially for vocal application, podcasting, all that kind of stuff. There are some pros and cons of condenser microphones, which we'll get to in just a moment. But one of the great things about it is it will work great with any type of audio interface. Plug it into a Focusrite, plug it into a Presonus or Steinberg or any of these other brands. You won't need anything extra like a cloud lifter to get signal out of it, which is a huge, not only money saver, but time saver as well. The Audio Technica AT3035 has a frequency response of 20 to 20 kilohertz. So the full range of human hearing, it can pick up the lowest frequencies and the highest, which is great. We have a maximum sound pressure level of 148 decibels, and it also has a minus dB pad on the actual mic. So if you could be miking up, say, a really loud electric guitar amp or a snare drum or something like that, you can click that switch and it will reduce the input, allowing you to record at a higher volume in terms of whatever it is you're recording without the microphone actually internal, internally distorting, which I think is a really cool feature. One of the strengths of this particular microphone, as well as many other Audio Technica mics, is the fact that it has an extremely low noise floor. And if you're not familiar with what that is, it just means the more you push the microphone in terms of gain on the preamp, sometimes preamps can be noisy too, which you want to low one of those, but you shouldn't have any issues with the microphone's self noise. It's just something that you probably will never notice. Another advantage to this mic over a lot of other condenser microphones is the fact that it also has a high pass filter switch on the back. This allows you to drop out the frequencies you might not need, especially for spoken voice stuff, which we're doing right now. I actually have all the switches in the neutral position and I'll switch those over now. What you're listening to right now is the Audio Technica AT3035 with the high pass filter actually enabled which is going to drop out a little bit of low end but this is great for getting rid of low frequency rumble traffic noise all that kind of stuff that might be happening outside or even when you knock the table with your arm some of those frequencies are removed as well which gives you a bit of a cleaner sound you do sacrifice a little bit of low end but it should hopefully still sound pretty great 
Now the polar pattern of this mic is cardioid, which means it's supposed to pick up more from the front than from the sides. We're gonna test that out in a really simple way. I'm just gonna to turn to the side of the microphone and see how much drops out from this way. I can tell that it's dropped out in my headphones, but I can still hear myself. And as I come back to the front, you hear it just sounds full and just really nice sounding. As I go to this side, it's still gonna pick up some of my voice, but not a lot. And if we turn it 180 degrees, you're gonna hear the reflections probably coming back from my kitchen on the opposite side of the camera. So that's how it sounds. Now it does pick up a little bit of background noise like most condenser microphones do, but you get the freedom of not having to hook up a cloud lifter or anything like that. You can just plug in and get a really nice sound. If you're in a really noisy environment or an apartment where there's lots of people walking around and making a lot of noise above you, this might not be the best microphone for that situation, but if you're in a house and or if you have you know, a time of the day where it's quiet, you're gonna get some really great results, but I would also suggest not having a really loud computer on the same side of you behind the microphone. So keep all the loud stuff on the opposite side of the mic and you should be in business. Let's see what kind of damage we can cause in terms of plosives. Now plosives are those B and B words that really pop when you talk into the microphone. It's just blowing air into the capsule. What I like to do anytime I'm not using a pop filter is to turn it on a diagonal like this and just talk straight ahead. And you shouldn't really have too many issues with plosives this way. It actually sounds pretty much as it did before, talking straight into it. I'm hearing a little bit more room that way, but you know, with the pop filter, you can turn it and talk straight into the front and it's gonna sound nice and big. Ooh. Let's see what the proximity effect is on this microphone, which means Let's see how much the bass response enhances the closer I get to it. Now, just to let you know too, I've also turned off the high pass filter, so it's back to flat, and we're gonna get up nice and close like this and talk at a much softer volume and see how it sounds up close. This will give you that big, warm, full sound, no problems at all. So this microphone really ticks that box as well. Let's see how it sounds with a little bit of processing. Let's see how the Audio-Technica sounds now with some processing thanks to the DBX286S. Now I've left the gain exactly the same at 12 o'clock. No need to touch that. I've added a little bit of compression. I've also added some EQ, mostly on the low end. And I've also added just a little bit of expander. Now, if you don't know what expander is, it's basically, well, they call it downward expander. It's kind of like a noise gate, except it doesn't completely hard mute the signal and then have to open the gate every time you talk. It just gently brings down stuff under a certain threshold. I did a full video about that. If you want to learn more about it, links will be up in the cards. But this is how I run a lot of the microphones and the closer you get to it, the bigger it's gonna sound or you can sit back and still get a really great signal. It means it's gonna be a lot more comfortable to use over an extended period of time rather than le leaning forward. Now, of course, there are other solutions like you can get different types of desk mounts and all that for your microphone. But most people will probably just be going for something like this if they're just getting started. Let's go ahead and compare the Audio-Technica AT3032 to my Rode NT2A. You can still buy these microphones today. These are much more expensive, even used than these ones. But I got to tell you, man, the Audio Technica 3032 is a beautiful sounding microphone. So we're going to go over to this. You're going to hear it at the start with some processing, and then we'll go back to it dry. All right, over to the Rode NT2A microphone. This sounds drastically different, even with the same settings. So what I've noticed about this particular microphone is it doesn't quite sound as bright as the Audio Technica on the top end but it also sounds slightly fuller. I always felt like the Audio-Technica had a little bit of a scoop sound in some ways. It's got a great bass response, but some of those mid frequencies feel like they're missing in comparison to this guy. Two very different sounding microphones with exactly the same settings. Let's try them dry. And this is with processing disabled. So what you're hearing now is just the microphone going into the Steinberg UR22 MK2. This is a test on the Rode NT2A. And now we're back to the Audio-Technica AT3032. What can I tell you? I like them both. I'm glad I've got one of each for different applications. These microphones are great for anyone who wants to do a studio vocal session, record acoustic guitar, use them as a drum overhead or anything like that. And I've done all of that. I've also used the Audio-Technica in conjunction with an SM57 in a dual amplifier mic'd up scenario as well so they work well and being that you can drop the input gain by 10 db it's just a really cool thing to have so overall i can highly recommend these mics so what are some of the downsides of this audio technica microphone i guess really the only downside is if you're watching this and hoping to buy one new they're pretty much discontinued everywhere but you can find them still on ebay 
And you can find them at other places online as well. So just keep an eye out for them. I think they're a really solid microphone. And being that they're a condenser microphone, you can plug them just about into any budget audio interface and still get a really great sound. I've even used this going straight into my GH5 camera with the XLR adapter and it works extremely well. But one of the things that can be considered a downside being that my kitchen is right there, odds are you're hearing my voice coming back through the microphone in sort of like a reflection. So I'm getting some natural kitchen delay slash reverb like that. But now what you can do with this microphone to get the best results and what I'll do now, I'll do this all in final cut, which is my video editing suite. I'll add some compression, a downward expander, pretty much everything that the DBX was doing before, just to show you the kind of results you can get. And this will help kind of eliminate that room reflection sound that you're probably hearing to some extent. Now, most people won't care, but there's a lot of audio files out there that do care. <laughs> so uh, yeah, in, in my experience, after years of recording a podcast, I've never really had anybody say, oh man, I can hear the room in your recording. And I don't have an acoustically treated room, so I still believe there's a really solid spot for a microphone like this in a podcast studio. Thanks for watching, folks. My name's Shane. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Let me know what you think of this microphone. And down in the description as well, I'll leave a link to some other microphone reviews in a playlist so you can check those out as well. I have more microphone reviews coming up and comparisons, so stay tuned for that. Thanks again for watching. My name's Shane. Catch you soon. See ya.